Hello coders, today we're going to be talking about how to upgrade from a legacy PHP version to the latest PHP version. At the time of recording, it's PHP 7.4. This has been a fantastic discussion on the Discord server, and I want to thank Jim Shady for suggesting such a question. If you want to join the Discord server, then please go to howtocowell.net forward slash Discord. So, we're going to be talking about this from the worst case scenario. This is where you've got a legacy application. It has hardly any tests. It has hardly any documentation and it's live. It's being used by hundreds, if not thousands of people on every minute, every second. It is high traffic, high volume and it's selling. It's making money and therefore it's fragile. You can't just have downtime. This is quite a a fragile thing. It's a hot potato that you want to cool down and replace with another hot potato. So what are you going to do? Well, the first thing you need to do is you need to write some tests. You want to make sure that you have a level of, of acceptability. You want to know what currently works and what doesn't work. Okay. Remember, this is a period of time where I, in my opinion, it should be a feature freeze. You shouldn't be adding new features to this code base. But what you want to do is gain a level of confidence to say that the current web build at the moment is deemed as stable. This is the thing that is in production. So you want to have some tests to back that up because you want to be running those tests after you do the upgrade. And that should be your acceptability confidence level. Okay, so once you've created the tests and they are all passing, perhaps some aren't passing, but they are features that you're aware of that don't work. So these are known issues. That is still in the eyes of production stable. Okay, so the next thing you're going to do is you're going to tag the code. You're going to create a, a feature freeze and you're going to say this is this particular version. Okay, good. Next thing you're going to do is you're going to write a Docker image that mimics this environment. So you're going to, if you haven't done so already, create some Docker containers that replicate the environment of the legacy code. Allow all of the developers on the team to have access to these Docker containers, to run these Docker containers locally and make sure that they can do. This is the stable version at the present second. This allows you to have something that you can roll back to, hence the, the tag that you've given. Once you can draw a line under creating a stable environment that is currently what is in place, you can then start thinking about the upgrade. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to create Docker images and Docker containers that mimic the new world. These will have all of the updated versions that you want to use. So for example, the updated version of PHP. You want to bind mount the code from the old site into the new world. Okay, so you want to bind mount your code into the new web server running the new version of PHP. That code should have all of the tests. Run those tests again. You're going to find some errors. You're going to find some deprecated warnings. You're going to find things catching on fire. You're going to have a report of all of the issues that those tests have brought up. You want to analyze that. You also want to run not only tests, but static analysis. You want to make sure that you have enough auditing tools that check the code that give you the reports in an automated fashion. The more information you have, the more knowledge, the more power to you and to your team. So you want to go through all of that. You want to fix all of the bugs. You want to bring this to a stable level again. However, this process can get quite challenging and there's a level of discovery that you need to do. It really depends on the actual project. What kind of libraries and packages and extensions do they need? So if you're running a framework, you will have to upgrade that framework along with the version of PHP. This can, in some cases, require a rewrite. So be very, very careful. The good thing at the moment is that you've tagged a stable version. This means that any changes that you push to production, once you're happy with the upgrade, you're capable of rolling back to the previous acceptable version. 
Now, we're going to be talking about acceptability and confidence levels. This is going to sound a bit of a rant, but in my opinion, the developers, the coders, the people who are writing the code, building the projects, securing the application, maintaining the application, these people should have the final say as to whether or not the code is stable. Not the project, the code, whether the code is stable. They will be aware of the security impacts. They will be aware of the maintenance overheads. They will be aware of the version changes and so much other things to do with the code. The client will know whether or not it is acceptable from the client's perspective, but that's a very different thing. We're not talking about user journeys. We're not talking about how, you know, how much money they make in a, in a, period of time. We're talking about whether the code is stable and acceptable from a developer's point of view. And in my opinion, the confidence level grows with the reports that you run, all the automated reporting. So for example, the performance tests, the load tests, the automated tests, the unit tests, the acceptance tests, the functional tests, the documentation, the security checks, all of those kind of things. They will give you a level of confidence. They will identify the risks of a project and they'll tell the developers whether or not it is at up to an acceptable level. And this can take a little bit of time. And I've mentioned something before that I'm going to reiterate now. And that is that this period of time should not be a time where new features come into the project. This is a feature freeze. No new features should come in. You should have control over this upgrade not the client. The danger is if you add a new feature in whilst you're doing this upgrade and something goes horribly, horribly wrong and you need to roll back to the previous version, you're not going to have that new feature. So you need to backport that new feature into the old code. Remember before we created a tag of what was deemed as stable at the time. Once you've done the whole rinse and repeat of writing tests, fixing bugs, going through auditing, reading reports, doing all sorts of composer upgrades, fixing the libraries, sorting out the extensions, running tests and checking things like performance and the, the overhead of all of the new bits and pieces, changing the code to fit the new version upgrade. Once that is done, once you've got to a point where you're actually happy that this is production ready, then it's time to consider moving it off to production. Now, the beauty with Docker, of course, is you've got a production ready environment there because you're developing to that standard. So you could either move your Docker containers to production. Obviously, you need to harden them for the actual server itself and the environment that they live in. Or if you wanted to, if you knew that you were actually going to run the code on bare metal, then you would mimic the Docker images to fit that. So it's more of a one-to-one. -one. Then you would push the code up. Then you would do the deployment scripts and you would make all of the changes necessary. Make sure you list all of these down and go over a checkbox. Make sure that there is a way of rolling back for each one of these as well. What I suggest doing when you're doing a huge upgrade like, like this is you put the new code in a completely different place and then you use perhaps DNS to switch over the new version to the old version. Or you could do other fancy tricks with perhaps moving file folders and changing names and so on. You want to make sure that it's very easy to switch from one to the other if things go wrong. Once the project has been upgraded and it's been pushed to production, you still need to do a lot of work. This is what I call the bedding in period. You want to be monitoring as much as you possibly can without having any kind of overheads in doing so. So for instance, you want to be monitoring logs. You want to be monitoring traffic. You want to be comparing the new statistics that you're pulling in to the old statistics that you've had. If for example, you're seeing a lot of error codes, then that means that there is an issue that you need to act upon. And I want to just say to anybody who is perhaps a project manager or a client or anybody out there about this, don't just go, oh, it's, it's gone live now. Let's quickly move on to the next feature. No, you need a bedding in period. You need a period of time just to check that everything is working. Because if you're working straight away on a new feature and then a bug comes in, which is actually extremely severe, then you're going to have to shift your thinking 
to that. Now, of course, as I mentioned, this is what the worst case scenario. This is where, you know, you're dealing with a lot of money. You're dealing with a high traffic. You're dealing with legacy code that didn't have any documentation or any tests. So you want to be making sure that you're documenting this as you go. You want to be making sure that you're documenting the deployment process. You want to be making sure that every developer on your team is aware of how to actually build and deploy the system, not only locally on their box, but also on the server as well, if they have permission to do so. You want to also make sure that you check all of the background routines, the backups, the email queues, anything that is happening at night. You want to be running some tests to make sure that they work, make sure that the scripts run as they should do. Because of course, one system has many impacts on multiple systems and those impacts might not be seen straight away. So you want to be making sure that you, you have that ability and flexibility of monitoring those things as well. Now, depending on the project, things may go wrong. <laughs> they may go wrong. And in, in my opinion, they usually do go wrong. And therefore there needs to be a period of fixing and, and, and tidying up. What I suggest doing is is gathering a series of notes, a series of lessons learned throughout this process. Have a meeting with the developers, have a meeting with perhaps the project owners and discuss what you've learned through this upgrade process. The reason why is because you'll be upgrading again and you'll need to take with you the experience that you've learned. Make sure that this is documented. Now, I want to caveat this whole talk by saying that it depends on the size, the traffic and the type of the project. You know, the small projects, the upgrades are actually quite quick, but the large projects, the high risk projects, the projects where you have huge amounts of users using it at the same time, all of the time, then it's very, very tricky and you have to treat it with some really, really soft gloves, right? It is fragile. You have to treat it with care. So in summary, the more complicated the project is, the more risk the project has, the more time it's going to take and the more caution is needed. I want to thank everybody in the Discord server for talking about this in the general chat channel. Thank you very much, Jim Shady, for bringing up this subject. As I mentioned before, if anybody wants to join the Discord server, please consider doing so. Go to howtocowell.net forward slash Discord. Links are in the show notes below. If you want to access the pro user channel and the pro user voice chat channel, then do consider becoming a Patreon or a Twitch subscriber. And before I go, I just want to mention that we have new merch. This is the Hello Coders Rainbow t-shirt. Woo! So links are in the description below if you want to pick one of those up. Thank you ever so much for watching. Happy coding, everyone. I'll see you again soon. Cheers. Bye.